For this video, I'll be working through question two of the 2018 mechanics exam. Question two. Oh, fold this right over. Whether satellites can be launched into orbits that circle around the north and south poles, this enables the satellite camera to view the whole Earth's surface as the Earth spins underneath. The orbit um, period of a typical weather satellite is 101 minutes. Show that in order to keep the camera pointed towards the Earth's surface, the satellite must spin at an angular velocity of 1.04 times 10 to the 3 radians. Um, in your formula sheet, angular velocity equals 2 pi f, which is just 2 pi divided by the period, which in this case is going to be 2 pi divided by 101 times 60, which just gives you 1.037 uh, times 10 to the power of, was it, negative 3 rads per second. Oh, that is terrible. I'm going to make this down here further. Um, you can round that up to 1.04 times 10 to the negative 3 rads per second. For these show questions, you need to have the formula, the correct working, and then the correct answer. Obviously, if you leave yeah, they'll be able to see, and an examiner will be able to see that and give it a mark, and that's pretty obvious right there. Right, um, I'll move this up a bit. This angular velocity is achieved by firing two 5 Newton thrusters attached on opposite sides of the rocket, uh, opposite sides of the satellite's diameter. What? Satellite's 1.6 meter diameter. Explain why the two thrusters must be used rather than one on one side of the satellite with double the thrust force. Um, before we continue, I'm just going to circle this, because this will screw you up later. You hardly ever deal with anything to do with diameter, so we'll divide that by 2 to get the radius. It's just something to pick out pretty quickly. Um, there are two of these fellas, so we'll just quickly circle that. I'll right, pause the video right now, it's going to go through. Right, so I've said the forces applied need to cancel, so no translational motion occurs. What that basically means is, you can't have any unbalanced forces, otherwise the whole thing will just start to move. And we don't want that. We want it to sit in one place and just rotate. Um, so for only rotation to occur, equal and opposite torques must be applied. Um, so like, like take it for example, if you have a spinning top and you spin it, you don't probably think about it, but on both sides of the, you like both sides of the top, when you hold it, you provide a torque that way, on this on the side closest to you, so here's my pen actually, when you spin it like that, you provide a torque that way, but on the other side you provide another torque that way, so it's pure rotational motion. If I was just to spin one way, I'd end up dragging it with me, um, as well as obviously rotating it. So it's a strange question to ask, I think it's quite a good question, because people probably don't think about it, um, and it addresses some sort of good ideas. Right. The thrusters are fired for a very short amount of time to set the satellite rotating at the required angular velocity, 6.48 times 10 to the negative 3. Show that the rotational inertia of the satellite is 50 kg meters squared. Right, so we've got a torque, we'll write that down. Torque is equal to the angular acceleration, or rotational inertia times the angular acceleration. It's in our formula sheet. I'll show you what formulas we're probably going to be using. These fellows here will be using that one, guarantee it, we'll be using that one, yeah probably. Um, that one, probably not, because it's an ugly sort of thing, it's not just a point source at the end of a string. Probably use that, we've already used that and that. Um, you could probably use these, but I don't know, probably not. I'll, I won't need to use them, because I can already roughly guess what the answer is going to be. So, I want to find the inertia, and it's going to be equal to the torque divided by the angular acceleration. Um, where the ex angular acceleration is equal to the change in angular velocity over the change in time. That's sort of the general way to put it. Um, and what do we got? Torque is equal to force times distance. Times distance. Cool. In other words, the total rotational inertia is going to be equal to the torque, which is the force times the distance, divided by the change in angular velocity, divided by the change in time. The reason I say that is because it started from uh, zero, wasn't spinning, um, 
and it took that long to speed it up to that speed because that's the final desired rotational speed. Um, so I can find what the angular acceleration was um, and just plug it in. So I'll just write this out fully. Um, we have two rockets. So I'm going to go two times, what's the force? Five newtons. Uh, let's put zero, zero times how far away from the center? 0 0.8. That's what would trip a lot of people that trip me up to begin with. Then I was thinking, that's not right. I got 100. So I had to go back and figure out what I did. Um, times 0.8. Cool. And that's us. It's divided by um, 1.037 times 10 to the 4. Uh, times 10 to the negative 4, I should say. 3? Negative 3. Uh, divided by 6.48 times 10 to the negative 3. 3. There we go. And that equals 49.84 kilogram meters squared, uh, which is basically equal to 50.0 kg meters squared. Look at that. The answer. Right, I'll just try and fold this over. D. Instead of using two thrusters to adjust angular velocity of the satellite, it is often preferable to use a reaction wheel system. When the wheel begins to turn in one direction, the satellite will turn in the opposite direction. The wheel is a solid, is solid, and has rotational inertia given by half mr squared, um, which is actually the formula for rotational inertia of a wheel. Uh, radius of the wheel is that, 2 point, oh, 20 centimetres, 0.2 metres, and it's 5 kgs. Calculate the angular velocity of the wheel required to keep the camera pointed at the earth. State any assumptions. Right, so I assume this is just going to be like any other exam question. You've got, you got to find out what this is first. Like I is equal to half m r squared. We're just going to write that up there, which is going to be equal to... 0 0.5 times, what's the mass, 5, yes, 5 times 0.2 squared, and that equals 0 0.01 kg meters squared. Um, like I said, we're going to have to use this formula. Angular momentum is a rotational inertia times angular velocity. Which means the ooh, we're going to find the angular momentum of the satellite that we had over the page. So we've got the rotational inertia. Oh, can we see that? We've got the rotational inertia right there, and we're going to find, and we've got the angular velocity up here. We're going to times those two together to get the angular momentum of the whole satellite, and that will tell us what the angular momentum of that wheel needs to be to counteract it and then from there we'll be able to work backwards and find out the angular velocity of that wheel um cool right so we're gonna go i'm gonna use unrounded stuff 49.84 it's probably going to be more accurate times 1.037 times 10 to the negative 4 and that is going to give me 5.16 times 10 to the negative 3 kg meters squared seconds to the negative one. It's basically kg meters per second, but you've got two radiuses, so we've got meters squared, because um, it's L equals MVR, so you end up timesing by an extra displacement. Um, right, so this is the angular momentum of the satellite, so I'll just put LS. Um, I'll just write the generic assuming Pause this. The conservation of angular momentum and the presence of no external torques on the satellite. That's just like a generic statement. Um, basically, I'm saying that the angular momentum of the satellite needs to be equal to the angular momentum of the wheel um, in order for this to work. Um, so, what have we got? L divided by the rotational inertia should give me the angular velocity, which is what I'm looking for. Um, the angular velocity of the wheel, and I've said the assumption, so that's the assumption, conservation momentum exclu uh, excluding any external torques. If you've got any external forces, you get it wrong, because it's not level 2, it's level 3. 
Um, and I always, angular momentum is always angular stuff, not linear stuff. Right. That is going to give me 5.16 times 10 to the negative 3 divided by, what's the rotational inertia? It's up there. 0 0.01 is going to give me 0 0.5168 radians per second negative 1, uh, which is going to be equal to 0 0.517 rads cool um right yeah fun fact about these satellites this is actually how they work um we use like rotational wheels to like point the uh not the james webb telescope because it's not up in the sky yet, the hubble telescope um and we've sent lots and lots of like satellites and stuff out into space and f like outside of our magnetosphere when we've sent them way off in deep space there's been a lot of problems with these things because you have an inner bearing which basically is, allows the whole thing to spin up really, really, really fast. So here's that inner bearing. Here's a ball there. And you have all these balls, these ball bearings, these steel ball bearings, like that, that allow it to rotate around. Weird thing happened is these keep on like failing or kept on failing and people couldn't figure out why. And it never failed in the lab and always failed out you know, up in space, and it turned out cosmic rays, the high energy particles, were coming in, hitting these, like going through the satellite, hitting these ball bearings, and then they'd energize those so like free electrons, those electrons would jump, and then they'd weld the ball bearings to the uh, inner or outer shell or like casing of the uh, of the bearing sort of joint. Um, and then end up seizing, um, and it's a crazy thing to happen. And it took them ages to figure out until they brought one back and realised that it had been welded itself. And someone sort of guessed that that was a case. Um, so they use, I don't think they use ceramic ones now. I think they just use special lubricant that stops it from happening. But yeah, weird.